Hi friends and welcome to Storytime with Mrs. B. I'm Mrs. B and today we're going to read from our book, Love Your Neighbor. Today's story in our book is titled, Passing Through a Gate. Nicholas and his son Victor had quite a reputation in the town of Bishkek. Camels everywhere are known for their contrariness. They knock into things without warning and stop just as abruptly. Sleep when they want, even if it means standing up, and sit on rocks or sand or sofas as they please. But there wasn't a camel in the world that compared to these two. They were considered stubborn even by other camels. Everywhere he went, Nicholas wore a pink and orange bow tie with a t-shirt. Victor ate avocado and mayonnaise spread on his apricot salad, even though not a single camel had eaten such a dish since last year. The two of them once put on overcoats in the summer just because that was what their camely selves wanted to do. One day, as Nicholas was walking in circles, even though it must have been a hundred degrees out, he received a letter. This is good news, Victor, the camel announced as he read the letter. Tomorrow, your aunt, Tamisha, is arriving from Alma'ara. I haven't seen my sister in years. Victor couldn't contain his excitement. The two humps on his back quivered like palm leaves in the wind. Aunt Tamisha, his very favorite relative, was coming to visit. Victor loved Aunt Tamisha because she always laughed at his jokes. She also went everywhere with an umbrella, and Victor thought this was the most interesting thing a camel could do. How long will she be staying, the young camel asked. She is on her way to Tashkent, his father said, so she can only stay for a short, short while. A few hours, I'm afraid. Early the next morning, Nicholas sent Victor to an oasis several miles away to gather fruit and nuts for Aunt Tamisha. Don't delay, Nicholas called after his son. Hurry back so you'll have time to spend with your aunt. Victor rushed to the trees around the watering hole, picked the dates and almonds, and began to trot back to Bishkek. He had plenty of time left to see his aunt. Just as he was about to pass through the city's narrow gate, he had the misfortune to meet Ergut, a camel nearly as strong-headed as he. Ergut was just about ready to pass through the gate to leave the city, and Victor was about ready to enter. Let me pass, Victor said to Ergut, who stood there blocking the way. The gate was wide enough for only one camel to pass through at a time. Ergut refused to let Victor pass first, and Victor wouldn't step aside for Ergut. I'm in a hurry to see my aunt, Ergut, Victor explained. She is visiting today. She is staying for only a few hours, so get out of my way. No, 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 and no, the other camel grunted. You move out of my way and let me pass first. I was here before you, Victor replied, so get out of my way. Actually, I was here before you, Ergot insisted. You have to move from me. The two of them stood there, nose to nose, under the stone archway, as obstinate as only two camels can be. Meanwhile, Aunt Tamisha had indeed arrived at Nicholas's home. Where is my nephew, Victor? Tamisha asked as she drank a cup of tea mixed with yak, butter, and salt. I don't know what is keeping that boy, Victor's father said. It's getting late. I'll go find him. Please hurry, Tamisha said. I have to leave soon. When Nicholas reached the city gate, he found his way blocked by Ergot. He could see Victor standing on the other side, his hooves dug deep in the earth, the dust deeper than his ankles. Let my son pass, Nicholas told Ergot. He'll go as soon as I pass, Ergot called over his shoulder to Nicholas. Ergot then looked straight at Victor. While Ergot's back was turned, Nicholas got on his knees and quickly crawled through the other camel's legs to reach his son. You go home now to see your aunt, Nicholas said to Victor. I'll stand here in your place. So Victor sucked in his breath and made himself skinny enough to sneak past Ergot, who was now so busy keeping Nicholas from passing through the gate that he hardly noticed. Victor ran as fast as he could, his humps bouncing from side to side. Auntie, Auntie, Tamisha, he called as he approached his home, but his aunt had already taken the early train to Tashkent. Victor threw himself on the sand and cried. 
Victor's father remained at the gate for the rest of the day. Finally, when the sun set behind the dunes, Urgot said to Nicholas, Oh, all right. I've had enough. Ah, I've won, Nicholas snorted. Urgot stepped aside and let him pass. Nicholas ran home as fast as he could, his two humps bouncing from side to side. Of course, when Nicholas reached home, he discovered that Tamisha was gone, and there was Victor fast asleep under a silk umbrella that Tamisha had left for him as a present. You know, sometimes being stubborn can cause unhappiness. What do you think Victor could have done instead of standing at the gate for so long? And that's the end of our story. And you know what? If Victor would have just let Urgot go and pass through, he would have gotten home in plenty of time to see his aunt. So you know what? Sometimes stubbornness doesn't pay. It ruins relationships and it ruins good times that we could have. So you know what? Next time you're being stubborn, you might want to think about it. Is it worth it in the end? Hmm, that's a good thought. Until next time, be awesome, be good, and I'll see you real soon. Bye.